that time the subject is not willing to be participate then we have to withdraw the subject from the class then impartial witness so we are taking the help of impartial witness if your subject is illiterate they are not educated they don't know to read the content uh, they don't know to write the details so in that case impartial witness help we can take it impartial witness can be any person uh, can be act as an impartial witness but who cannot influence by the trial team members or who is not a part of the trial team member anyone can be impartial witness okay can be anyone like the uh, relative of the subject also can be a layer uh, this impartial witness or any other outside of the person also can be this impartial witness the thing which is that who should be independent of the trial can any family member but it should not be any member of the side staff it should not be uh, the relatives cannot become uh, uh, lars right L relatives um, means that close relative like the um, husband and wife uh, legally valid okay so they can become lar and uh, witness both they are eligible yes yes, yes 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 right okay thank you okay so which is required in case if the subject is illiterate okay if the subject is illiterate then we are taking impartial witness for okay because if you inform to some information about the trial the subject can understand all the information but the thing is that they can't write and they can't read the content that's it but they can understand whatever the information which we are providing and they also have the ability to take the decision to be participate in the trial but um, as per the rule subject should be read the content subject have to fill the details in the content so for that they are not able to do it but other things they can understand right if someone is not able to read and write but if you provide some information they will be able to understand the information right so in that situation only we are taking the impartial witness in case if anything is happen but now it is not always like the impartial witness uh, it's not you uh, usually we can see most of them have some qualifications at least they go to the schools okay so previously uh, this situation happened now also for just a like a one percentage situation we are facing for this impartial case like who have any old age people like who is like uh, more than 70 years old for that case only which i saw uh, for this case is applicable okay so who is independent this person in part fitness who should be independent of the trial who cannot be any trial team members or the hospital staff okay that, because that institution also is a part of the trial right so it cannot be any trial team members or any other uh, representative of that institution so who cannot unfairly influenced by the people involved with the trial they cannot be influenced by the investigator or any other coordinators or any nurses they should um, not influenced by any other people also mm. then who should be uh, attend uh, at the time of informed consent procedure then not only for the subject in case for example your subject have alzheimers okay so in that case we require the help of lar but that lar is also illiterate then what to do then that time also we can take the help of impartial witness so here yeah, the subject lar they also illiterate we can take the help of a impartial okay yes ma'am so, uh, who attend the informed consent procedure if the subject or the subject legally acceptable representative they cannot read so what to do uh, on behalf of the subject this person uh, will read the consent document and whatever the information investigators provided during that time also this person and the subject will be present and both these persons and the uh, impartial witness and the subject will discuss about the trial then um, who will read the consent also on behalf of the subject and in the consent some information may or subject may to fill it but subject is in so they can't fill the details so that also uh, this impartial witness uh, they will uh, right 
so i have a doubt so here in this case subject there is a section for the subject signature so in that case what we will do there is a section for the subject signature so here what we will do thumb impression can thumb be impression taken. yeah we can provide the thumb impression of the subject okay we can provide the thumb impression of the subject also okay so that we are doing but there is a certain situation which we face that even the subject is literate someone they know uh, to do the signature like for the signature there is no language if you provide just a plus mark then also it's a signature for someone okay so for some uh, one they will be illiterate but they can do the signature so in that case they can put this their signature uh, but in the source document we should be document that subject just no to do the signature so subject done the signatures in that case but uh, the date that we can keep as blank okay the portions have the name of the subject signature of the subject or the thumb impression then take so the name and the date which we can be keep as blank uh, then that signature or the thumb impression we can provide okay so this is the requirement of this impartial witness and a layer then uh, next is about this is the one which is present in your informed consent form okay what is present in informed consent form so here in the informed consent form it contains some information which our subject or their lar or their impartial witness which need to fill it so it's contain name of the subject the full name of the subject okay first name middle name last name full name that should be present. okay then initials of the subject how we can write the initials of the subject like we provide the first name middle name last name then what is the initials of the subject any idea and some people will not have middle and last name no, no, no. so they will have initials only the first they, name and the initial not that initial and signature it should be um uh, mr mrs uh, no Num enrollment number. Mm -hmm. Here initial it is uh, like a short name of the subject. Okay. First three letters. Ha ah, first letters right. So my full name which is Soja Jacob. So my initial which S dash J because I don't have any middle name. I have just first name and last name only. So my initial S dash J. Okay. So like that, we have to provide the initials. First letter of the first name, first letter of the middle name, first letter of the last name. If there is no middle name. We can provide just that hyphen mark. Clear? Clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So that is like that. Initials we have to provide. It. Not only here in your delegation law also for you. If you are a coordinator, for you also you have to put their initials. Like any short signature or a uh, initials you can to provide. Then date of birth, complete date of birth. It should be contain year, month, um, then date, everything. But in certain subject, um, they may not don't know what is their correct date of birth. But in their other card or in the identity proof, so year will be there. But the date and month. It will be absent. So, do you have any idea what you will do in that case? We will consider that year, uh, so not year, that uh, date and month as first Jan. Mom, because we will take the year and then we write one Jan or thirty. Uh, one Jan, one Jan, then year. 